Nothing like some JD Crutch for Iora Nataloani Gyu and Metkules Hungan. That is Pumada Zu by JD Crutch. And no, I, I, Fanatsu has not started a radio show in which you can call in and dedicate sort of your your cumpleaños, your casamiento, and all your wonderful wishes for your family. But Govzahu Dandan Samoro, I love Chamorro music. And please remember that on the Fanatsu YouTube page, we have been uploading old school Chamorro vinyl songs. So last month I got a copy of Hua Preba Na Bonita by J.D. Crutch, his second vinyl album. And so we digitize some of the songs. Every week we upload a few more songs. And so be sure to check that out. But today we have a very, very important topic that I want to discuss with everybody. And I'm so happy that we have one of our sitting senators here to discuss it with us. And so when thinking about advancing Guam, when thinking about improving our island, right? There's all different ways that we can approach it. A lot of times people think, well, we should look to the United States. Whatever the United States is doing, we should do that in Guam. But we forget there's almost 200 nations in the world. And some nations do things a little bit differently. Some do things in ways which we might not agree with, some so there may be some who do things that we sort of should that we feel like we should strive towards that that seems like a better approach than the way we do things now and so um the topic of the discussion today is uh, a bill that has been proposed by senator duane san nicolas a new freshman senator elected into the legislature in guahan who is proposing that caning be added as a form of punishment for for certain crimes on guam and the inspiration that he has for this is that one of the most prosperous, but also one of the safest countries in the world is Singapore. Singapore, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it is about a little bit larger than Guam in terms of its physical area, but it also is, has millions of people. It's one of the top 10 economies in the world. It is one of the safest places in the world, given its size, but it also is a place which has very severe punishments for crimes. Some of you may be familiar with stories about um, you know, uh, people littering and being severely punished or uh, drug dealers uh, getting even more severe uh, punishments, uh, being executed and, and, and things like that. And so the question that we have today though is Singapore's model of punishment, is this something that we feel would be good to bring into Guam as a way of addressing our own issues? Is it something, and remember that this is, it's most important that there be a dialogue on these sorts of issues. That um, if you feel strongly that this is not a good idea, then share your opinion, but also recognize that um, if we feel that crime and, uh, and these issues are severe enough in our lives on Guam that they need radical solutions, then you also have to be willing to listen to a solution that may offend you you may not agree with, but you have to recognize that if you feel that crime is out of hand on island, well, then maybe there needs to be a solution that we're not comfortable with right now. And so I just want to qualify this that for me personally, I don't, I don't think that caning is necessarily a good solution, but I, I, when I, respect them, I give respect to Senator Duane San Nicolás though, for proposing something which is definitely outside of our comfort zone in terms of uh, addressing issues. And so, Senator Sidzus Masi Tatlunai, no in Sauna Gwini Maginagi Finatsu, thank you so much for, for joining on Finatsu. And so, give us, uh, give us some background on where this bill sort of uh, came from, where this idea came from. 
Thank you. Thank you, Senor. And I really appreciate, you know, explaining that, uh, you know, we, we don't have to agree, but we can also respect each other. And, and that's the most important is respect. You know, we got a lot of kids watching, you know, how we're behaving. And so if we show them how to, to respect, you know, and, and that's good, even if we disagree. But uh, the, the one thing that uh, is very, you know, my, my, uh, my, my wife's family invited us down to Singapore. And uh, there was a big yachting festival down there. And my sister, my, my wife's uh, godbrother was taking part in it. It was an international thing. So I said, okay, let's go down there. And but while I'm, before I go down there, I wanted to read everything I could about Singapore. And, and I came across Lee Kuan Yew, who is the, the founding father of the modern day Singapore. He took Singapore from a, a pretty much a, a mosquito infested, malaria infested, mud hut, you know, place to what it is today, you know, it's a very respected. And what I noticed is that a lot of people in the West, particularly our leaders in the States and everywhere, really admire Lee Kuan Yew for what he's done, you know, and uh, everybody admires him, but nobody follows his example. And so I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's not only admire him, but uh, let's also um, maybe try to follow their example. And uh, while I was running, uh, well, I went to Singapore, I think it was uh, nine years ago. Um, I think it was 2014. And uh, we, we, I, 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 got, I got to the, to the airport. I, it was just amazing. Uh, we drove for miles and miles and miles. And it was Putitano view throughout and both sides of the place. It was just so beautiful. And uh, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Putitano view all the way to where we had to go and it was just it, it was just amazing the uh you know the the atmosphere the uh you know the sophistication and the the crime rate that's the first time i ever saw a lamborghini drive by and when i was at a when i was out uh, at the hotel i, I for, for the very first time i actually saw a rolls royce in my entire life and and you know it, it was just amazing to see uh how singapore you know and, and reading about singapore and also its leader and how how they've progressed and so i said okay let, let's let's delve into what makes this place you know and, and, and it's safe and one of the reasons for that was because they had caning and uh um i read about caning uh, i i see singapore you know has a really low crime rate and uh and i was like hey let me see if we can uh we can do something about this when i was running you know i i like I believe that i'm a man of my word okay uh, people, people knew why I, I ran. I ran for to to legalize consumer grade fireworks. And while I was on the campaign trail, a lot of people said, "Sir, you know, it can't cannot be it cannot be just about fireworks. You know, can you address some of the things that uh, you know that uh, that are bothering us, like uh, the the economy and crime?" And so I was, uh, I said, "Okay, you know, let me do that, right?" And so I was looking around. Uh, I, I I introduced my fireworks bill you know, to keep with the, 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 the spirit of why I actually ran first. And then I, and then I, the second one was to address crime. And I still have some stuff that I want to uh, proffer for the economy, right? So let, let's, let's go at these, this, this one by one. So I, then I introduced the caning bill and I, and I, you know, uh, I've been uh, approached by a lot of our constituents as, sir, can you do something about it? So I looked around the world trying to find what's the best solution I have. I can't, I cannot look to the U.S., you know, Place is crumbling, you know, there's, there's drugs, drug ridden, I mean, gun violence all over the place, you know, so where do you go? Where do you look for, 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 for an alternative to our crime? Because they don't, they obviously don't have the solution. So I, I, I said, let's, let's try to do this and introduce this, uh, this bill to see. And uh, I know we're going to get opposition because like you said, it's very uncomfortable for most, for some people, but at least we, we now are paying attention to what we can actually do about crime. This bill, you know, everybody has to know I'm happy already as I am, whether this bill passes or not, it's okay. It's okay. But at least we, we, uh, we are addressing the crime issue and that's, that, that's the most important thing. Right. That's, that's yeah. Again, again, and for those of you watching, we I see we've got some people that are tuning in. And so remember, if you have any questions, um, if you have any comments, feel free to share. I know I was messaging some of you on social media saying, here's your chance, you know, because it's one thing that social media does is it makes everybody feel like you're the king of your own hill. So you comment and you feel like 
the universe has heard you. But one thing that social media makes us feel sometimes is that we're siloed, where it connects us to the people who feel the same thing that we do. And it prevents us from connecting to those who disagree. It makes us clash with each other more, as opposed to finding common ground with each other. And so um, I encourage you, if you do not agree with the idea of caning as a form of punishment, you know, uh, people in the last election, crime and sort of uh, criminal justice, these sorts of issues were very high on the list of voter concerns. And so the question becomes, people are worried about it, people are concerned about it. So then what do we do about it? Sort of beyond the, the same old rhetoric. Um, what are the models and the options that we can use to think about it? Um, because Senor, I, I appreciate you bringing in the fact that sort of, because um, one of my former colleagues at the University of Guam, see Dr. Lisa Natividad, she's a social work professor there. She always says, you know, we have sort of the best models for dealing with the issues that the people on Guam face from the United States, but we find that they don't work because they're not meant for a small island. They're not meant for Pacific Island people. They're not meant for sort of the... Uh, sort of uh, Asian populations, which sort of, uh, which make their homes in Guam. It's not meant for who we are and where we are. And so when are we going to stop trying to just act like we can't, that, that we have these problems because we can't measure up to the United States? When are we going to look for some real solutions for them? Yes, 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 that's true. And, and, you know, we had a couple of uh, social worker students uh, come in, you know, uh, and ask me questions on the bill and, and we, we, you know, we gave them uh, our, our, our idea. And I, I, I did reiterate, you know, we are going to get some opposition. And that's fine. That is fine. What the, what the goal and this exercise is trying to do is trying to bring to light the problems that we're facing. And I offered a solution. Maybe other people have solutions that they can also proffer. And, and they can come and talk to me. And, and I, I'm willing to, you know, willing to... Uh, to put this out there, the, the, a lot of people, a lot of my maybe my 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 uh, my colleagues uh, may not may not want to 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 tackle something like this. It's very controversial. I have no political aspirations uh, after this uh, this term. I really don't. Uh, so you know, I truly want to make make it very known to the to the people that I'm actually really here for you, and that uh, you know, controversial or, or controversy or not. You know, I'm going to address the issues that you you ask me to address, and so this is this is where we're going with that. And I'm open as long as we're respectful. You can respect me and respect we respect each other. It's okay. You know, we don't agree. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. But let's address the issue at hand, and that's the, and and that being that we have, you know, we have a high crime rate. Yeah, and 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 uh, I'm I'm open. I, I always keep telling everybody this is a working document. And, uh, you know, we can always, if this doesn't work, maybe we can try something else, but, but, but respect, uh, respect on the, the top of our list. Okay. Yeah. So just, let's actually check out uh, one of the KOM news pieces uh, on your bill real fast. Thank you. And, and then we'll continue with the discussion. Okay. I got, I got it's okay. It may sound harsh, but it will bring results. That's according to new Senator Dwayne Sinicholas. He's currently finalizing a bill he plans to introduce that will allow for criminals to receive caning as part of their sentence. The idea came from his trip to Singapore several years ago. Sinicholas noting a huge population there, but minimal crime that he attributes to their corporal punishment system. He adds that he's tired of seeing our people being victimized. We see our community here, you know, it's just rampant crime and seems like lawlessness and revolving door and stuff like that and that's the stuff that we need to address and we need to be honest with it and you know and, and be brave. Sinicholas's bill which is supported by a few of his fellow democratic colleagues aims to offer a more effective form of punishment that will dissuade and deter potential criminal perpetrators and may help with lowering the prison population. The individual will have to be uh, found guilty of a crime and then it would be up to the judiciary. We gave a lot of leeway for the judiciary to decide whether they would want to uh, use cap, uh, corporal punishment. This, it, this, this is like another tool uh, along with uh, long, harsh time sentences. If found guilty, they must be physically capable and be between the ages of 18 to 50. 
The number of caning strikes will be specified in the sentence and will be inflicted on the buttocks and will be done in private. Although the goal is to inflict some form of pain and punishment, Sir Nicholas wants to maintain the dignity and fairness. As to who would be administering the caning, it would be a corrections officer and present would be the chief of police and a medical official. Doing, you know, can't be cruel and unusual. You know, and be, because we have the medical officer there, you know, that's that's protecting against the cruel, cruelness of the of the thing that we're not trying to be cruel. We're trying to administer a court sanctioned uh, um, uh, law. Since the word got out about his plans to introduce a judicial corporal punishment bill a few days ago, it has generated a lot of conversation within the island community. I think it's a surprise to them as much as it's a surprise <laughs> to, to everybody. But, uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, I've been dreaming about since uh, since I, like I said, I, I, I read everything about Singapore and since I visited Singapore, I've, I've always thought of this as a, as a wonderful solution to our crime problem. Here's my crime solution. And I know, I know we're going to have some opposition, but I want to have everybody uh, approach this with an open mind and uh, consider the, the victims. I'm always open to solutions. This bill is a working document, you know. They can always call me and say, hey, Senator, you know, we, we would like you to approach it this way or that way. At least I got the community talking, and at least we're addressing it. Jonah Gancharfis, KOM News. Thank you for that. No, Tazo, and so, Senor, you said that, um, so, or I wanted to ask, sort of uh, what has been the response among your colleagues? So you mentioned that there was some support among your colleagues. So what has, uh, what, what has it been like, um, have there, uh, so. Right, so, you know, we, we do have, uh, I do have my support of, you know, some of my colleagues like uh, uh, Roy uh, Kinata, uh, 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 Will Parkinson, Joe San Augustine, uh, you know, that, that's mainly the, the guys that, uh, you know, the, the, the senators that I, you know, that I talk to on a daily basis. Uh, so, you know, they, 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 they are, they are on board with it, you know, should it go through, they, I'll get the support. I'm, I'm hoping to get a bipartisan support as well, you know, the Republicans. Uh, I, I really don't talk to them about it. I, I want them to, you know, to, to have the ability to think freely and let them come up with their own conclusions. And, you know, should, should it come to the floor, you know, I'm going to, I will ask them to consider supporting the bill. Yeah. Oh, Biba, Biba. And um, one of the, so well, oh, you want, you want me, I'll, I'll also mention, you know, um, this is a compromise that I thought of in my, in my mind, you know, uh, you know, Guam is such a small community and, and I, and I thought of, of, of actually introducing capital punishment. And uh, I think when we mentioned this, I was explaining to you earlier that, you know, this, I had to come to a compromise. We're such a small Island and, you know, should we, should we have capital punishment, which is far more, uh, unethical right and 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 could be seen as far more cruel but it, it's actually you know it's actually a form of punishment that we have in the united states right and for treason if you had you know you were doing something treasonous out here you know capital punishment is a is a you know is a is a, is a form of punishment for you uh but uh i was i was trying to figure out like okay if we you know we're such a small community we if we for instance uh you know put somebody to death. What we're really doing is putting our brother, our brethren, you know, our, our family, you know, and uh, I wouldn't want to do that to a Sinana or, you know, Sianti or, you know, so, somebody losing their father, uh, you know, so I said, you know, what's the compromise? What's the compromise? How can we, how can we administer justice, but, you know, uh, 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 in a way where, you know, the, the person is still alive. And then also, the fact that we might put somebody who's innocent, you know, to death, you know, that doesn't sit uh, very well with me. And so I said, okay, this is, this is a, you know, this is a, this is a, another form. And, you know, I, I was watching the Terte's, uh, you know, um, dealing in the Philippines and how he dealt with crime and, and, uh, and, and the growing drug problem. And he, you know, a lot of people died, you know, thousands of people died. Uh, with his rampant, uh, you know, uh, uh, type of, you know, uh, justice. And, and I saw how it hurt the community there, you know, how it hurt, hurt the, the families, you know, and I said, you know, this is, this is something that uh, we, you know, putting people to death for, for, for drugs or 
something it's, it's just not in line with our spirit and our community right so this is a compromise mm. okay oh no so just massive for for sharing that um we do have some questions coming in from viewers yeah. and so um Senor Lillian, half a day, Senor Lillian Cruz. Si Dus Masi Toru Champu ne Egadzan and Sopopoti Fanatso. And Senor Lillian wants to know do any states utilize caning as a, uh, as a, as a form of punishment? Are you aware of that? Uh, no, no states actually use caning uh, as a form of, like, like, this is something new, okay? It's coming from Singapore, it's coming out of Singapore. But, but our, our contention uh, when we wrote the bill was out of 19 states, okay? Um, 15 have corporal punishment in schools. That means they can use paddles and, and whatnot to inflict some sort of punishment on a child. So we said, you know, okay, if, if 15 states have, uh, on their books can, can have a corporal punishment in schools to punish students, then corporal punishment in jail, in, in prison, as a form of punishment for crime could, you know, could be considered. And so we, we put that in our legislative findings and uh, 15 out of 15 out of 19 states where corporal punishment is legal are still conducted in the mainland. So, you know, we, we try to, you know, try to word it in a way where, hey, if it's good for the students in these states, then it's good for criminals who, you know, who 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 do this and commit crimes against, you know, our, our people. So that's what we, you know. That's the closest I can find to caning is paddling <laughs> and uh, corporal punishment in, in schools. Yeah. Okay. So let's actually talk about this because I've gotten some questions from people who want to know what are the specific crimes that you are proposing uh, right. caning be used right. as punishment for, right? Because are you proposing that shoplifting, you get caned or is it rape? Is well, it uh, armed robbery? So if you, uh, I'm sure I'm sharing here. So let, let me give uh, you an example. The, the bill, and I'm going to put the link to the bill in the in the live stream, so people can also read it themselves. Okay. So yeah. So uh, in Singapore, um, if you commit a armed robbery during the day, you get eight cane, eight eight lashings of the whip, right? In if you were to conduct the the armed robbery at night, you actually get twelve whips of the cane. So you know. Uh, they 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 do it in that in that manner, uh, but what I did with this legislation was I I allowed it to be open so that the judiciary can decide for themselves how they would want to administer uh, 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 giving the sentence. So it, it could be something as petty, it could be something uh, you know uh, petty theft or whatever, but it, it's up to the judiciary. What we want, wanted to do was we didn't want to limit uh, uh, their their hands in the administer. The administration of, of the punishment. However, we put it in the in the bill toward the end that uh, for certain uh, heinous crimes, uh, they get the maximum strokes of the cane. That's twenty four. And so uh, we also mentioned here that uh, uh, there's a there's a a law that that actually shows. Um, I'm trying to find it here. That actually. Uh, specifies that in the bill i mean in the law that uh that that they're heinous crimes certain you know uh like rape and 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 uh you know murder and stuff like that those will get the maximum strokes of the cane there and i think those are felony crimes yeah that, that, that that's the only distinction we we made uh uh, you know, and how how that uh, how they would administer the the most heinous crimes gets the mass, maximum strokes. Yeah. Well, thank you. And so uh, you can see here. Uh, and, and and you know what, Doc? The, the other thing I wanted to point out is that when we were doing our research, uh, most of the, the 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 violations of the Eighth Amendment of cruel and unusual punishment were actually prisoners who were actually already in the care of the of the uh of the state in 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 a, in, in, a, in the jail right most of these people were actually beaten up uh beaten up uh and, and it wasn't a court order uh, uh punishment so let's say you're sitting in jail cell on the 
and the you know as an example you're sitting in a jail cell and a, just so happen you look at the prison guard wrong way and he goes in there and he beats you that's cruel and unusual right uh, and that's that's what we were we were looking at as as we were approaching the law as what what what, what has been deemed cruel and unusual behead uh can't uh, said uh uh there, there there's a there's a portion here in the bill where it actually tells you but but uh you know beheading quartering you know the old the old british uh uh, types of punishment, those were considered cruel and unusual, and also beating up of prisoners inside while they were confined, and they, it wasn't a court order uh, type of corporal punishment. So those were considered uh, unconstitutional and against the Eighth Amendment. And so this is nowhere near that. This is a this is something that that uh, you know should should go through. It's a it's a it's a I guess it's a a method uh, of of punishment. Uh, ordered by the court that's the difference yeah oh see just must stand thank you for uh somebody uh see just must say ed for tuning in and letting us know that the audio dropped for a second there i'm gonna i it appears to be back hello see just must say ed no and uh but for board if you have questions this is your chance if you have suggestions if you have suggestions this is your chance right this is one of the the wonderful things about Guam and our community is that we are large enough, but small enough so that there's 15 senators and you have the chance to visit each of them and talk to them. You could give them a hard time if you wanted to. You could be very polite and friendly to them. You could share your ideas with them. Right. And so this is your chance. It's not a one of the things uh, you, know, you were mentioning in the states that there's a lot of animosity between different sides of the political aisle. aisle. And I see a little bit of that on social media, but also at the end of the day, though, we are still a small community. Yeah, we are. Remember yeah. that that respect, you know, that we may disagree, but how can we still move move ahead together? Yeah, the, you know, and, and and you know, I was looking at uh, at other uh, other jurisdictions of the states. You know, so large, so vast. Here in Guam, you know, have we if we do something like this, this might be 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 a uh, might be worthwhile for us because you know we're such a small community it's not like you have to deal with millions and millions and millions of people right but this you know should should anything happen like this i think it would affect our community in some time in a positive way you know i'm really trying to uh reduce crime reduce recidivism you know and maybe you know reduce the uh the the population of the jail for uh, uh radio new zealand had interviewed me and they 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 said that 44 uh, percent of of uh, of people who were released from American jails end up back into the system after uh, before their years up, you know, and so that's a that's a high recidivism, you know. Uh, I, I think if we were to be open minded and and offer this type of uh, you know um, a, a punishment, I think it might reduce that. Uh, and, and it may not work in all kinds of jurisdictions. It could work here because we're such a much more, you know, we're a more tinier community. And, um, and, and so, you know, it, it's worth a try uh, uh, to, to try to reduce our, our crime rate. I'm getting in. Um, we have another question that's come in. Is um, <laughs> given the traumatic nature of this type of punishment, do you feel that it may actually, uh, for those who suffer with addiction, mm -hmm. and the, the question mentions uh, ice addicts, for example, people that are addicted to, you know, to hard drugs, do you feel that this actually may worsen their condition by, by sort of adding more trauma into sort of their lives? Um, you know, that, 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 that remains to be seen. Huh? Uh, but when, when you're, when you're in the, 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 the judicial system and you're behind bars, I'm hoping that you're sober enough, you know, to uh, uh, once the punishment gets carried out that, you know, it might it might give you because uh, right now at the moment, it's not working. Everything that we're doing, it's not working. You know, uh, we force people into rehab and stuff like that. We court mandated and, and all that. And it's not working, you know, and uh, before I introduce this bill, I always ask myself, would this make my dad proud? <laughs> Would this make my dad happy, you know? And uh, I, I, I used to, you know, my dad used to punish me too with the ballast goggle, right? 
And uh, he never did it in anger, but he did it, you know, he did it because he loved me. And he said, boy, I did this because I love you. Because if you grew up to be something else, you know, it would break my heart. And, uh, and so that, that's the angle I approach this. You know, my, um, my, my dad, when he promised that I was going to get it, I got it, <laughs> you know. And uh, he never did it in anger. And, and you know, uh, the, the American Psychological Association, everybody says, oh, you punish the, you know, you use the rod and, you know, you, you're, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to have all this, this stuff. And, but look at, what's, look at what has become of this, you know. Uh, for decades and decades and decades, they were told not to spank your kids and all this. We got parents who are afraid to spank their kids and look at where our society is going, you know. And I said, you know, maybe we, we, we need to return to, you know, uh, how, how we used to discipline our kids for the sake of our for the sake of our, our, our island and perhaps our nation. You know, uh, we need we need to go back to this stuff. And there's a something that was pointed out with Radio New Zealand, because they're also tackling this, this crime issue. And, and, you know, I think Tonga, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, everybody has some type of corporal punishment. But the Western, uh, you know, the United Nations that says, hey, you guys better stop that, because otherwise, we're not going to give you, uh, you know, uh, monetary aid. And the, the, these countries rely on monetary aid and one of the discussions that we have that if we continue to let crime rise and we continue to let these people you know destroy our lives with drugs and everything we're going to lose ourselves we're going to lose ourselves as pacific islanders you know the very bedrock of our culture is love enough of and respect right and we're losing that when you put drugs into the mix and you put these heinous crimes into the mix. we're losing ourselves and i think that's why it was very important that uh uh, you know, the Radio New Zealand had, had come and talked to us because, you know, this is an American territory. <laughs> you know, this is a very interesting uh, uh, a bill that was proffered in an American territory, in a westernized, Amer you know, territory of the United States. And so they found it kind of interesting. And so here we are, you know, we're, we're discussing it. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we try to address what really is at hand and and that's the high crime rate we're all facing. You know? Again, I think um, what I appreciate, you know, about what you are doing is that um, you're really, it's because uh, people talk about, um, you know, sort of the, the crime, the, the fear, the community and stuff like that. And people talk about it in, in ways which make it seem like everything is in chaos, everything's out of control. But then they don't necessarily want anything to radically change, right? right. So that's one thing that I, that I always like to sort of talk through is that if people say, for example, like, um, you know, like in the U.S., one political party says the other side are treasonous, you know, they're, they're terrible, they're destroying everything, right? And so if that's true, then it makes, you know, then all that's left is to do something radical, right? So if you use that type of rhetoric, if you believe that, then you have to be prepared for something radical to try to address it. And we see that here on Guam, people like, uh, for example, um, for example, uh, the new attorney general, Doug Moylan, sort of discussing, sort of using that type of rhetoric to talk about our community and why he needed to be elected as the attorney general. Um, but then once we get to this point, though, where we're talking about, well, what do we do if things are so bad? People don't want to really do anything. They kind of just what we see is, for example, um, people saying, put them in jail longer, which doesn't do much. It just costs more money. It doesn't necessarily make anything better. It just it's uh, it's not really a solution to the problem. It doesn't actually work. Um, and so, you know, and I appreciate you bringing it out. So forcing people to kind of confront, if things are that bad, let's talk about this seriously. Um, you know, it, costs, what, it costs like $7,000 to, to uh, I think, uh, to educate a child, right? It costs 90 grand to house them in jail. <laughs> Something like that, you know? I mean, f figure this out, you know? And But there's one thing I wanted to also point out. And, you know, I got some... Uh, you know, some, some feedback from our manana, you know, the, our, our older people, you know, are in our society or one, one, one person came up to me and he says, you know, boy, 
at first I thought your bill was silly, you know, you know, he thinks I'm, I'm just joking around and playing around and really I'm not. And so he goes, you know, I thought about it at first and I thought it was silly, but boy, you know, when I sat down and I thought about it more, you know, he goes, wow, that's a, that's a very creative bill, you know? And so I, I, I you know, I, I really want to let everybody know that, yes, you may disagree with me, but I'm really trying to address the crime problem and I'm trying to do it as honestly and as forthright. And, and I want to keep with, with, you know, my promise. I'm a very, you know, I, I like to keep my word doc and, and what I promised. And so this is a, this is an effort to, 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 to keep with the promise, you know, and, uh, and bring to light our, our issues. And maybe, maybe not this, maybe not this, maybe, maybe not this, but let's figure out how to address it. Right. Mm -hmm. and so that's okay. why. Now we have, I, I see that um, we have one of, ooh, one of our financial financial patrons, see Enrique Baza is watching Enrique Hoffaday. And so one thing that, that I find interesting as a historian is that one of Enrique's ancestors was caned or whipped by a Spanish governor <laughs> in the 1870s. And so caning was an offense under the Spanish um, and so, uh, there's actually, uh, for those of Precedence. you, who, what's that? <laughs> it's precedence. <laughs> oh, I'm getting, and then, uh, under the U S Navy before world war II, there was also capital punishment as well. Right. That's uh, and so, but one of the things that some of you may not know, this is from, um, so from pretty old documents, centuries old documents, there is a Chamorro who says that the phrase Timaimego Sidzuus comes from the person who is designated to to whip people for the Spanish governor that uh, that it was actually uh, like his punishment for hurting for whipping others is that eventually his arm that he used didn't work anymore so people said that to my megosis but anyways that's an old story I think I came across that in the archives last year well that's that's um, great that you point that out you know it's it's it's, it's good because it, you know it, uh, you open our eyes, you know, you open our eyes that, hey, this, this once did exist here, you know, these types of punishment. And, and so, you know, it's not new. This is not new. I'm, I'm not proffering anything new, you know. Uh, the mo Most Western societies have had uh, this type of, uh, you know, even Jesus, you know, uh, he, he was, he was whipped and, and, and mm. at this point, you know, but, but, it, all, all through all through humanity we've we've always had corporal punishment you know it's just uh different times uh, uh, uh um, things change and and, and you, you know i always say don't ever give up because look at look at roe versus wade one 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 moment you know uh the supreme court says it's the law of the land and then the next moment you know it's not the law of the land you know so you got to give it doesn't matter what you, you put out there you it, it it, it might be constitutional one day and may not be constitutional the next, depending on who's yeah. interpreting the law. Yeah. Again, let me um, let me bring in another question. We have a sure. question from Hafade Senor, Senor Fred Berdalio Jr. Or, and he's he's mentioning though that because uh, caning is considered to be uh, uh, cruel and unusual punishment in many countries around the world. Um, he says that economically, this reform would cost more because of litigation amongst prisoners, human rights activists, the ACLU filing court judgments to review this because people might consider it to be state-sponsored violence. And so I did want to bring that in because have you heard from the legal community on this issue? For example, um, have you heard, uh, I've seen that sort of uh, the new attorney general has given some response and some lawyers have been in the media talking about it. And so have you spoken to some of the legal community here about their thoughts on it? Uh, no, no, I haven't heard. Uh, whatever I've been reading was pretty much uh, based on, you know, what, what they're putting out there. But, uh, you know, we spend a lot of money on, uh, on, on litigation for other things, you know. Uh, I'm willing to take this all the way and say, hey, you know, if you're you're willing to spend litigation on one one bill, unconstitutional or whatever, what have you, then this is worth this is worth it, you know, because what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to save our society from crumbling and going in a you know going in a way where there's there's going to be a play, a time and place where there's a point of no return. This is worth the fight. 
this is worth a try. You know, when people break into people's homes, you know, and clobber them over the head with a hammer, uh, you know, we got to we got to put something out there and give it a try. Be brave, be brave, be bold about it. And yes, some 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 countries uh, have found it as cruel and unusual. But look at look at where they're going. Look at the direction they're going. You know, and uh, I think this is worth a try. And I, I think it's a weakness of mine if you if you uh, you know you you shut something down uh, way before it's even born. <laughs> you know, let's take this for a role. You know what? Saving a life out there and punishing criminals for their for 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 their injustice that they've done to 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 a to a brethren is worth every bit of a fight that I'm willing to do because we need to restore some kind of respect and and order amongst us all. And to this day, you know, I know Fred Bordalio is one of my 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 biggest critics and. Uh, you know, we did run together and we wave side by side and, and all of that. And, you know, he's more than welcome to come in here and see me and, you know, maybe give me a solution, you know, to, to what we're facing. But, you know, this is worth a fight, you know, Doc, this is worth a try. And, and I, and, uh, you know, we've been, we've been seeing for many decades, we've been putting this aside, nobody's brave enough to, to, to tackle the crime issue and everything seems to be crumbling around us, but nobody seems to want to do anything about it. So here we are. Mm -hmm. No, here we are. Are. and please, uh, Senor Fred, Senor Fred uh, and others, you know, in, engage. That's the most important yeah. thing. Is I mean, that, uh, you can come over to my office. I see everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the most open, I think, you know, uh, I'm very open and, and willing to sit down with everybody. You know, give me, res give me the, you know, give me some respect. You know, come yeah. over and talk to me and don't beat me up on social media. You, you know, you, you, that's your, that, that's your, your prerogative, but you know, fatal to me, if, if this is, if, if, if you really have some concern, grave concerns, come to me, talk to me. I'm very open. And you know, you're going to get a, you're going to get the, the same respect that I always give everybody. Everybody deserves to be heard. And, and it doesn't matter where it is at. And you come to my office, we can hammer this out and talk, talk about the solutions that maybe you have, you know, mm. that, yeah. that's important for me. I need to, I need to say that out uh, because, um, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's about respect, you know, let's, let's, let's give respect. Okay. I did want to share that uh, attorney general Doug Moylan did say that he thought that your bill was a, a good start in terms of discussion, but was concerned about if caning is considered to be cruel and unusual. Uh, and, and, so, and yeah, and, and I do respect the attorney general. You know, I really respect him uh, a, a great deal. And I'm, and I'm very happy, you know, that, that uh, it's in his mind. <laughs> you know, he's talking, he's thinking about it. And, and, uh, and, and so, you know, I have yet to sit with him and, and to to talk talk uh, talk this over with him, but I'm willing to work with him and everybody else to try to to come to a you know a viable solution that is that is good for all that, that that makes us all whole. You know, I'm not trying to push this bill on anybody and shove it down anybody's throat. And you know, it's not like that. Uh, if the bill passes, okay, cool. You know, good, good, good for the rest of good, good, good for our society. If it doesn't, it's okay too. But let's figure this out once and for all you know i i like to uh, i'm a man of my word and i and i and i and, you know i don't like to waste time I, I'm, I'm not here i i, I don't want to waste time there's there's an issue at hand it's crime and let's deal with it let's do it i don't have much to do <laughs> i wanted to share some other comments so gina byers a sidus masi gina fanatsu patron sidus masi she says that she thinks that the money would be that to, that would be spent on this would be better spent on education, uh, uh, childhood support, you know, support for families and stuff like that. So I agree, I agree with that as well. You know, I agree. You know, that's why there's a, there's another bill that I'm, I'm I'm thinking of doing, and that's to address the economy. And you know, there's a lot of stuff we need to pay for. We have services that that that, that people are needing out there, but you know, we cannot have that unless we grow the economy. And so uh, we, there, there there should be enough for everything. If we, if we do it right. And Enrique Baza, who says that he is actually not against the caning bill. He says that, that he's okay with it for serious and violent offenses. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And so 
I'm going to please put in your feedback in Sidus Masi, Senor Fred. Your, he's, uh, Fred Berdalio is sharing more of his thoughts on this. Sidus Masi, EJ Mantanonia, Sidus Masi, he says, let's think outside uh, the let's think outside the box. But then he also says we need to think outside the military fence, too. <laughs> and that's like enough. I like that. Is that um, for, from Fred? No, no, that's from uh, EJ, EJ Mantanonia, Sidus oh, okay. Masi, EJ. But um, well, you know, oh, you know what I was thinking? I was like, you know, uh, well, the Marines are coming, right? Could you imagine a big sign? You know, my son is a Marine. Okay, I love my son. I dropped him, uh, uh, you know, uh, right, right at the, uh, uh, when his ship came in, I dropped him. We, you know, I brought all the Marines with me and they had a night out in town and they were, you know, they, they were misbehaving and I, I couldn't believe myself what I saw all the Marines staggering up to their, to their ship. And I was like, could you imagine these Marines now coming to Guam? What, what, what other things we might experience, right? And I love my Marines. They're my Marines. They're our United States Marines. That's my military, right? But could you imagine for once, there's a big sign that before they leave the, they leave the, uh, the base, uh, think twice, caning is legal here. You know? <laughs> you know, think twice. Skate caning is legal here. You know, prevent a lot of the misbehavior from our Marines. And let me let me just say, my son is a Marine, K, okay? and uh, they can get a little bit uh, out of out of sorts sometimes. There's a reason why I think the, uh, the the they're they're actually happy that they're coming to Guam. You know. Mm -hmm. Because of their, you know, with their experiences in Japan and whatnot. But oh, so this must say, so you know, that that brings up a very, you know, good point there. That if people are worried about uh, violence from uh, military being stationed here, then this is a deterrence, a potential. It's a deterrent, you know, it's a deterrent. I, I, I read, I read articles from, you know, outside the base and you know, or outside the camps of these marine marine camps. And uh, you know, uh, that that's another thing that we have to be. You know, I'm trying to look to the future. And see how how this this might prevent further you know with with, with what's coming eh? uh, mm -hmm. especially with the marines but uh, could you imagine just 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 that alone maybe that, that that's a, a preventative measure for our, mm -hmm. our own uh, marines from misbehaving while they're outside the gate we have a great question here from tristan kintanidza hafa day tristan and he wants to know if you have considered restorative justice and so uh, for those of you who are not familiar with restorative justice, it is a more, it's in terms of crime punishment, the judicial system, it's a more indigenous focused approach. And so, Senor, I don't know, have you ever thought about restorative justice? I, I've, I've thought about restorative justice. And um, I think uh, um, like uh, with, uh, there, there's one out, see uh, Senator Parkinson's bill where I think he wants to allow for when you do you know you come out uh, after you served your time you're able to you know to to get public assistance and i think there's only two two places in the union that uh, that, that 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 prohibits that and so you know if, when people uh, commit a crime and they they get released you know they they, they we, we need to figure out a way where we can prevent them from going back in mm. so, okay we'll get it we'll get it going back in so allowing them some type of aid now after they've paid their 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 uh you know their debt to society you know that they we we actually give them props and so that they don't they don't fall back into the, mm. into the, the no uh again that's i think that's important is that they they ultimately are humans and they need to regardless of what they've done if they're to be reintroduced into society then then they need some type of help tristan let me uh oh, be, Oh, but oh, the, the most important thing is that after they've paid their crime, then 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 uh, you know they pay their debt to society. You know we have to take care of them too. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be cruel or mean or anything, but I like like I, I want to be a restorative too, right? Because we want to break these uh, these trends from people actually going back into jail. Okay. And so Tristan has a, another comment though, in which he's 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 explaining what he's kind of thinking of. So. Restorative justice argues that while corporal punishment may be effective in the short term, it fails to address the underlying causes of the offense and can create new harms and resentments. So one way of thinking about this is that um, in indigenous communities, so for example, um, in ancient Chamorro times, um, 
whenever an offense would be committed, it would come down to the families coming together in order to figure out what can get us past this. You have hurt somebody in our side, you need to make amends. And it would always be something in which uh, whoever was wronged would, would get the chance to face whoever had hurt them or wronged them. And so restorative justice is this okay. model of punishment, which is based on the idea that you're, you're part of a community. And so that crime hurts the community but then the community has to find a way to address to that, again, from that, to become whole again. And um, what Tristan is mentioning here is that the model in which you kind of uh, physically punish people or you throw people in jail doesn't actually make the community whole. That's right. Yeah. It, That's it right. actually just keeps the wounds open in different ways. And and a lot of times it can traumatize the people, even the, the criminals and others involved, right? Because... Um, and so what he's what he's mentioning is what a lot of native com Native American communities and indigenous communities still use, which is not about sort of uh, the court system in which sort of a judge lays down a punishment, but in fact that sort of uh, you create a system in which the wrong is sort of worked out through the people who have been wronged and those who have done the wronging. And so this is a this is something that, that, that is a wonderful uh, you know uh, uh, issue that he brought up and. You know, I'm open to that and come in and visit me and let's, let's, let's find a way, you know, let's find a way to make that happen. You know, uh, uh, like I said, my door is always open. It sounds like a great idea, you know, come in, come in and visit me and, and let's talk this out. You know, uh, the, the, the caning bill, uh, actually lingered in my head for, for many, many years. Okay. Uh, on, only now that I was, I had the ability, uh, uh, to run for office and, gain the trust of the, the, the people that I'm actually here. <laughs> so it took a long time. I've been thinking about this caning bill for the longest time. And so if you have some type of, uh, you know, you have some type of uh, a solution, come and, come and see me, you know? Uh, a lot of people have come to see me because I'm very open and I'm willing to do things that may be unpopular, but at least we get the dialogue going. And so if he has something that is very uh, important to him and might be valuable to our society, then come on in and see me. And, and maybe we can talk about it. And then maybe we can, you know, if it's, if it's good, then we will we'll, we'll propose it. Yeah. Again, it's just massing it for your openness. I do encourage people because many of you who, who watch Fanatsu, who, who follow Independent Wahan, for example, you, um, you're not necessarily in favor of the caning bill. But one of the great things, though, is that we can use this as an opportunity to think of other ways that are outside the box, right? So perhaps the caning bill is not the, the direction that you would think of as being best. There's other ways to think outside the box, but use this as a chance to, to, to get that going. <laughs> yeah, use this as a chance to think outside the box. <laughs> hungen, hungen. I mean, um, I think for this, one of the ways... You know, think outside the the prison cell because that's one thing that's always um. You know, that's always uh, when we think about if somebody commits a crime, you know, they commit it to the community, right? But the whole process of justice belongs to the government. Right. They get to decide what happens, right? And the people who have been wronged, they get to watch, right? And the people who have done the wronging, they kind of get punished, they get sent away. And so that's why the restorative justice model is really about how can, if something bad happens, the community right. still have a sense of cohesiveness without sort of resorting to kind of throwing people away in prison, right? So, so that's why, for example, um, you know, uh, in a lot of indigenous societies, if you, if you wronged another family, you would then have to go work for that family your family would send you to work for that family until you had been, until they had been satisfied that, that the wrong was repaid. And that's the way that you feel whole, right? Because if they're just thrown away in jail, then what's the what, benefit? What does it do? Yeah. <laughs> what's the benefit, right? So, so thank you to those who are sending in those uh, sorts of suggestions. I think, I think it's important that if you do not agree with, with what the Senator is proposing, Maulika, that's okay. He has come on and he has shared that he's open to anything, right? And this is your chance that, you know, take advantage of our small island. Take advantage of our legislators 
being fairly open and accessible, go down and say, here's my experience, here's what I've researched, here's what I know, and you, you can have a big impact. That's what I love about I love that about our island is that connection there. That's very true, Lai Doc. And thank you for that. Uh, people need to, and, and you know, for myself, you know, I, I, I want to let everybody know that I'm open, you know, I'm, I'm open to any suggestions. And, you know, if there's any concerns or whatever, you know, make, make, make a time to come and see me. Uh, I, I always tell my staff that we only have now 678 more days left in my term. You know, like I said, I don't have any uh, political aspirations beyond this term, and I don't know if I'm going to run again, but this is your chance to be open and, and maybe have some, you know, somebody listen to your concerns and, and we, we can try to address them the best we can. Yeah. And can you, uh, can you let people know, Senor, where is your office? Uh, in, so that people know where they can visit you. Yes, Senor. Okay, we're, we're here in the, the old PDM building, the DNA building. We're on the fourth floor. Uh, 407 and you can contact us at 671-989-4400 and you know talk to our our staff and make an appointment to come and see me uh you know like i said i'm very open to any suggestions how, how we can best address our, our our problems in our you know in our society uh how we can address the economy and uh a crime you know and i'm also trying to we're trying to get my my fireworks bill passed, uh, so you know we, we're 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 quite busy, but uh, you know we're always open to to people coming in and seeing us. I see Zeus Masi, see Zeus Masi, Senor. Do you have any final message that you'd like to share before we wrap up this episode? Uh, I, I just want to let the people know that you know my heart is with you all, and that uh, you know your the, the the all the struggles and. And the crime issue really affects me, you know, uh, it keep me up late at night and trying to figure out ways to prevent crime, you know, ways to uh, make the economy better. I understand a lot of people are struggling out there. And, you know, this is a this is my my best effort to try to make, you know, uh, move things forward and try to fix the, the problems that are facing our society. And I'm always open. I'm I'm very straightforward and uh uh, try to be forthright with everybody and trying to keep with the spirit of why I ran, you know, uh, to try to be open and, and honest and, and always optimistic about the future and, you know, what the future may bring for us. And so if you come in and we talk about it, you know, we can secure a better life for, for all, for, for all our people, you know, and that's where I'm at. I, I have nothing else to do here, but, but, but take care of the people of Guam. And that's just, just the bottom line. So if you have anything, please come out, reach out to me. It's very important. You know, we may disagree, uh, but at least we can offer each other respect and enough amount. So this is the end of today's Fanatsu episode. Adios. Adios. Adios.